Bombshell is a so-so film about the sexual harassment uh, of several prominent women by Roger Ailes over at Fox News that it's it's okay the acting is good it's just not that great of a film and I think it was heard a lot because it came on the heels of The Loudest Voice a documentary about Roger Ailes with Russell Crowe playing him that more focused on Roger Ailes's life but just appeared to be a better deep dive into what had happened with it. The film stars Charlize Theron, Nicole Kidman, Margot Robbie, John Lithgow as Roger Ailes, Malcolm McDowell as Rupert Murdoch and a couple others in there, Kate McKinnon's in there, and it's it's an okay film. It's it's well made. The acting is very good. Charlize Theron is obviously very amazing, along with Nicole Kidman. And even Margot Robbie does a pretty good job. Um, I think Margot Robbie's performance is a little bit more hype because she plays like a composite character. So they really give her some of the juicier bits to chew on. But I actually think Nicole Kidman had the better performance out of all of the three women in this instance. Um, as it was really kind of their story about what had happened to them at the hands of Roger Ailes versus the loudest voice was looking at Roger Ailes and his history and kind of how everything built up to it. The film it really focuses on the 2016 election time frame where uh, Megyn Kelly was going to be, Charlize Theron's character, was going to be moderating the presidential debate there. And I think it did detriment to the film because it focused more on bringing Trump and various comments and things he did into the situation and it was wholly unneeded because the story is really about what these women experienced and went through under Roger Ailes and it just seemed more or less they were trying to play on some political sympathies by bringing Donald Trump into the picture and he really didn't need to. That's a very artsy styled film. There's a lot of voiceover narration looking directly at the camera and such things like that. And the pacing of it's pretty decent but it kind of bounces around a little bit where there's no real comprehension of what time frame you're going in because it starts right around the presidential um, debate and then it speeds forward but doesn't give you any basis of where it goes. Pretty much it's completely over by the time Trump is elected to the office with Roger Ailes eventually getting terminated at Fox News. So it focuses on these characters, kind of what's going on. Uh, Nicole Kidman's character is Gretchen Carlson and her basically treatment at the hands of Roger Ailes on how he would sexually harass these women in a way to use that to say you're going to get promoted if you do this. And they make a point of saying that a lot of his harassment wasn't necessarily overt. It was more kind of leading you into something. He basically, you know, sets the stage for you and then you're the one that's got to make the initial move. Um, other than Megyn Kelly's character at the end of the film reveals that, you know, Roger Ailes made an advance move on her, tried to come in and kiss her. She pushed him back and it possibly alludes that there may, something else may have went on. It doesn't really say, but it says, you know, he basically wanted to kind of cover his own ass, so he didn't retaliate against Megyn Kelly because she was a rising star at the time. And it uh, focuses on the Margot Robbie character, who like I said is a composite character. Basically, she comes in right on the cusp of um, the Gretchen Carlson issue starting to break out. Um, she's working for Gretchen, and then she gets moved over to Bill O'Reilly. They take a lot of shots at Fox News, so if that's something you like, you'll enjoy the film a little bit better. If that's something you don't like, then you'll just be like, oh, okay. A lot of the jokes were kind of tailored around these Fox News shots, and a lot of them didn't really work because you could tell if they were a little politically biased and how they were formed. Um, there's one point where Roger Ailes makes a comment that Barack Obama you know, has people to try to try out there trying to kill him. He has it on good authority. And it's kind of like, <laughs> okay, the guy's paranoid. But obviously he's very paranoid at this point because he's been sexually harassing women for years. Finally someone's starting to speak out and come out against him. So the son bitch better be paranoid because he's going down. And I, it just, it was just kind of like, that. Eh. So the Margot Robbie character, she goes to Bill O'Reilly and ends up getting in trouble because she brings up Rush Limbaugh, which O'Reilly doesn't like Rush Limbaugh. Because O'Reilly, you know, they're kind of competing each other even at different mediums. They're still competing for viewers, in essence, some of the same viewers. And then she bonds with Kate McKinnon's character, who, you know, tells her that she's a liberal lesbian. And she's like, well, why are you working at Fox News? And I'm like, well, Fox News is the only one that hired me. And now nobody else will hire me. And it's like, oh, okay, I can see that. But the story just kind of stays 
with the status quo. It doesn't really give you any major or big reveal. Certainly if you watch The Loudest Voice, because all of that was pretty well done in that miniseries by Showtime, I believe. And, um, and Russell Crowe, of course, gives a great performance as Roger Ailes. Uh, a lot of makeup and stuff on him. And this one, John Lithgow, is just kind of like... Uh, you can tell they put him in a fat suit, and he just seems to be playing just this nasty character, more so than Russell Crowe, who was playing this nasty, really manipulative character that if you sit there and listen to him long enough, he could almost sweet-talk you. And that's what Roger Ailes actually did to these women, is he sweet-talked them into thinking a lot of it was their ideas, and this movie didn't really focus a lot on that, and more kind of focused on uh, Charlize Theron, Megyn Kelly struggled to come forward with her allegation, because... Once Gretchen Carlson's allegation breaks, then it becomes basically hellfire at Fox News where everyone is either with Roger or against Roger. So all the other hosts are trying to formulate their plans to be with Roger. But Megyn Kelly's not coming out yet till eventually Megyn Kelly does kind of release a statement after she goes forward, speaks with some of the lawyers on the internal investigation, and she discovers that she's witness, I think, W, and that there's you know 22 other women that were also involved in this or that have come forward and spoke about, you know, what Roger Ailes has done to them. So, you know, it gives her a little bit of hope that she's going to come forward. And then the, you know, finally uh, Roger gets kind of walked out, gets perp walk out of Fox News. And then the Margot Robbie character is faced with the dilemma of, you know, Rupert Murdoch is taking over. And they make a point of showing that it's really kind of the same good old boys club. The Murdoch sons are kind of a little bit shit on, but not as much as, uh, Rupert Murdoch is and it it's just like eh, okay I can see where you're going for it didn't necessarily work for me uh, I think they should have took out a lot of the politics and just really stuck to the story you got somebody who was very good at his job was a very devious motherfucker so you really got to focus on both of those aspects and try to then separate the man from the myth so to speak and they didn't do that good of a job for it. Again, it's well acted. It has three of the best actresses on the planet in the film. And they're doing a good job. But it just seemed a little bit tailored towards them specifically. And certainly like Margot Robbie's character. I just never really felt that she was giving anything more than just a cry on command kind of performance. Versus Nicole Kidman who you could see some actual struggles with her in terms of the Gretchen Carlson uh, story where you know she hopes people's going to come with her and then they're not with her and then finally she ends up winning at the end so there's a little bit of victory in her face at the end and you can see and then that's really how the film ends it ends with Megan Kelly still with Fox News before she finally eventually leaves Margot Robbie's character realizing that she's going to be stuck in this good old boy network so she decides to quit she walks out drops her uh, badge on the table and then Gretchen Carlson you know gets 20 million dollars is told basically she's got to shut up she can't ever talk about anything she can't slander Fox News and then she's like you know I don't care what they say about me the only thing I care about is that they believe me and that's how the film ends it's a it's a decent film if you don't like Fox News, Fox News then I would recommend the film if you do like Fox News I would say you know you probably don't want to watch this film because it's going to play up some tropes that you probably don't enjoy and you know, it's one of those ones that it's a little bit political. It's not as political as I think it could have been, but it's it's just kind of a so-so Midland of the Pack film with some really good acting in some instances and some other instances of kind of over-the-top acting that you can tell that the way it was written in Taylor, that's what they were trying to evoke with these performances, more so than it being a natural, free-flowing performance from the actresses. Other than that, um, thank you. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and share, and have a good day.